Hey, if you follow me on Instagram or if you've ever been to my webpage, uh, you might notice that I post a personal diary comic on there almost every day, most of the days, and it's about my life and things that I go through. And I started that back in 2017. And each year I put it together into a collected book. Well, this year's no different because I have a brand new book out and it's in ebook and paperback and it's called Going Outside Again. It's a collected issue of all of my comics, which I titled Then This Happened because each day something happens and I write about it. It's even more fun and oddly makes weird sense when you read them one right after the other in the book or in the ebook. So right now you can go to my website, tomraiswebsite.com slash book five. That's tomraiswebsite.com slash book and the number five. And you can see the new issue and actually check out a few preview pages. That's tomraiswebsite.com slash book five. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today, I talk to a cartoonist who actually has a very long history of illustrating children's books and graphic novels. And uh, one of the ways they got started and inspired was because of the uh, Sunday comics format that used to be in the papers, the big color one page comic strips that used to be, you know, when, when one of the comics would get a full page of their own that would have all the panels in it for that story. And they loved doing that type of story. They uh, ended up becoming an illustrator, which is something they didn't want to do, but you know, bills to pay, things like that. But then started getting work with a pub, a publisher, an agent. That's what I meant to say. An agent who got them work, uh, illustrating for books that writers were doing and a whole library of books that if you go to their website and see, there's just, they've done a lot of work, but recently they've wanted to try and pursue a story and characters of their own. And that is what the person is talking about. The struggles of starting out a new idea, one of your own, one that you have full control of. And uh, we discuss that project today on the show. So here's the interview starting right now. I'm Stephen Gilpin. I uh, I'm actually in the middle of figuring out what it is exactly that I do. Huh? Um, for a long time, about about 20 years, I was an illustrator. I still am. I still do. I, I still say. do that kind of stuff. And in the last in the last year, I, I'm 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 in this. Uh, it's, it's a transitional period. I have to figure it out. Um, it's because it, it wasn't too long ago that uh, I I was. I, I started doing graphic novels. I'd always loved doing comics and stuff, but I didn't get too many opportunities to do them. And then uh, I started doing a one page gag strip for a magazine back in, I think, 2016. And uh, that was that was cool. That was this weird serendipitous sort of thing. And uh, it's for it was for boy, uh, boys, the Boy Scout magazine. Boy OK, Scout, I was going to ask what magazine, Scout. like, first of all, what magazine was still going on in 2016? And also, what was it? So it was a Boy Scout like Boys yeah, Life yeah. or and something what, like that? Magazine. Yeah. What magazine and what magazine that would print a comic like that's weird. <laughs> and right. uh, anyway, so that but that was it. I think it's probably the last one. I don't, I don't know. Um but uh, I was it was really interesting because uh, when I was in college, I had developed a comic strip that evolved from I did it for the for the, uh, you know, the student college magazine thing that they did once a quarter or something like that or okay. four times a year. And uh, this, and uh, I had some fun doing that and it was weird as heck. Uh, but it evolved as I was in school. I discovered, uh, you know, the giant Sunday pages from like the whole page. Like when when comics first uh, started to get popular back in the early 1900s and the first half of the 1900s, you know, a right. Sunday page would be a Sunday page. It would be the whole page of the newspaper. And I thought that was the coolest thing. I, I'm a big crazy cat, George Harriman fan and. Windsor McKay, Little Nemo and Slumberland. And, you know, those were the big ones for me. Huh. And uh, so I I wanted to do the same thing. And I, I had these big 18 by 24 inch uh, comics that I did. And uh, I eventually came around and, man, this is a really rabbit trailish sort of explanation of what I do. But it's uh, 
<laughs> it's interesting. I haven't verbalized this so much, so I have to forgive me. I, uh, so it's not the I elevator up, pitch is what I you're telling me. I into a regular newspaper. No, no, I don't <laughs> have that memorized whatsoever. If Well, if you don't know what you're doing, you know, how can you develop an elevator pitch for it? But when I do, man, I'm going to get it down. Okay. Um, anyway, I, I ended up doing these comic strips and then totally laid it down for about ooh, 15 years. And, uh, and I, I became an illustrator, which is something I swore I would never do when I was a kid, you know, like a, like a teenager or, or graduating from college. I was like, man, I'm never doing that. That's for losers. And, uh, and I ended up doing it. I, I had, uh, kids in my early twenties, so I had to figure out some way to pay for, you know, being, being a parent and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, so I, I ended up taking, uh, an illustration job and, um, uh, I, I got good at making, uh, you know, taking my art style and making it, uh, commercial, you know, I learned to use Photoshop and stuff in the early two thousands. And, hmm. and, uh, so I became an illustrator doing, uh, it, in, initially it was for a particular company, but then a few years later, about 2006. I ended up getting a, an artist rep and uh, doing children's books and chapter books and things like that for about uh, 10 years before I picked up comics again. And I mentioned the comic because it was I, ironically the exact kind of form that I was particularly passionate about. Okay. Um, the one page with the gag at the end. So that, that was, that was interesting to me that that actually happened. And then that carried over to oh, almost the present day, about 2022. Uh, well, a little bit before that. Because and the one page you're talking short, about, shortly. you're saying that it was like a like an eight panel, nine panel type page. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I, it was the exact same form that I was really excited about doing at the time. Okay. And uh, I, I just I think about that now and then. I think just you know what a rare opportunity that was to even do. Uh -huh. And then the fact that I, I was kind of made for it in a way was, was really weird, but uh, yeah, this is the kind of deal it was. Okay. This would be a, this is, this is one where I was like, I don't want to do a four panel strip this time because I don't have a lot of time uh, to do all those little panels, even though I totally make up for it in all the detail and stuff. I don't know yeah. why I do that. I also, I'm also, I, I, if I'd love painting, um, I can I can paint pretty well and I'll 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 do those now and then um and I'm like I said I'm transitioning into like man what else can I do cuz in 2000 So why is it that you're transitioning into what else you can do like what's 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 the reason for going like I'm not just drawing these comic strips that you were just showing that you're really into before like why why are you making right, this transition yeah. Well I I have never been successful at uh having another job Okay um uh, I, uh, I, I've, you know, tried, tried a few things along the way, but, you know, this was really the thing that, uh, you know, especially, oh, about 12 years ago or so I, I figured out that, wow, that's, you know, it's the illustration work that's really paying the most, you know, I basically cool, you know, cause I just get work. My rep was able to get for me, you know, they, they, I have had you know spent all this time and I've farmed out all of my sales and marketing, you know, for, for any business, regardless of what you're doing, you gotta be able to, you know, everybody thinks that they can if they can just produce it, that's enough. But like, oh no, no, you can produce to your blue in the face and still be broke. But you know, you gotta have some way to connect with the people who want what you've got. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's actually, I was listening to uh, some of your other podcasts and like, you just did one. I got the email this morning, like, oh man, a Facebook ad thing. I never even thought of that. That would be <laughs> really interesting to try, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's stuff like that, that I'd never had thought of uh, to uh, like, oh, you know, just, it, it just, it hurts me to even go into that place, but I know I've got to. Um, well, 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 and the reason is, is because in 2022, I don't know if it was backlash from COVID or what, but the stream dried up. Mm -hmm. Like I had done 18 months of graphic novels where I did these graphic novels of a couple of Artemis Fowl books right. and then a Bonicula book. Yeah. And then right after that, everything, I didn't get any more work. And, okay. And uh, so I spent all that time of uh, working on my own project for 2022, just waiting for 
more work to come, but it never did. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Those books that you did, um, how, first of all, how did you get connected with those books? How did you even get, cause like the Benicula one and the Artemis Fowl one, like how, how did people find you? Did you already know these people? Like how did those projects come together? Well, that's an interesting thing that I figured out. Oh, probably it was in Oh four, Oh five, something like that. I, I basically at that time had one client that I'd been working with that uh, was kind of where I learned all of my uh, professional polished computer skills and stuff like that. Okay. I, it was, I worked on staff at a place that made kids meal promotions. And eventually that, that work slowed down and I knew that I had to do something else. I, rather than market to uh, all of these different potential clients, mm-hmm. I thought that it would be way easier if I could just get an agent, at, like a representative who okay. would do that for me. So I picked up, or I, or I had been given one of these, oh, showcase of illustration. That's what it was back back then. Right. Um, now it's workbook or directory of illustration, and which had which have uh, listings of uh, artist representatives and stuff, and all of the people they represent and everything. So I I connect uh, contacted three or four of those, and sent them my portfolio, and uh, I heard back from two i think and i i think i went with the first one <laughs> so You're like I, I've, I, I've already done enough <laughs> yes yeah. take whoever came like, first. Oh, that's good that's enough that's yeah. good enough and uh so yeah they ended i it's a i work with shannon associates so they up until 2022 i i had been getting um a pretty substantial amount of work and it okay. was carrying me pretty well and uh but then i'd I, I'm not sure exactly what happened. It just, everything stopped. I even asked, like, is there, am I doing something wrong here? I don't, okay. I don't know what's going on. I suddenly had all of this time to uh, work on my own work, which I used. I, I ended up uh, doing a personal, uh, like the first third of a graphic novel project, which I published called the Lestragonians, which um, I was wondering how you pronounce that. I, w- I saw the right. <laughs> I saw the website for it, and you know how the human brain works. You read like the first part, and I'm like, "Is it the Lotharians? What's the, you know?" I- <laughs> <laughs> it's all getting mashed together. Yeah, but yeah, that that was the same. They were the same characters from the comic strip that I developed when I was in college, which I wasn't going to do okay. until I I had some crazy sort of mystical experiences, which uh, prompted me to pick it up again and uh, uh, forge that particular uh, story. And um, yeah, so that, that uh, you know, staying on the topic of, of uh, actually making a living, you, you've got to, you know, one way or another, you've got to connect with the people who want your stuff. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was the big game changer for me, getting a rep. But, and like I said, in 2022, that particular avenue, dried up for some reason i i I can't i keep on likening it to uh you know dragging a canoe across a dry riverbed you know it's just like oh someday it's gonna rain or maybe (laughs) maybe there's some more water down the way it'll be all right well did your agent have an answer for you when you asked why has why you haven't gotten any offers or uh things to do in a while no they did they really didn't (laughs) okay all right (laughs) it was i was kind of like okay all right well uh hmm i'll just try doing the, okay i'll there there was uh a, a little bit of an issue with some of the images on my website um but not, nothing major and uh you know still not really sure what the problem was i have i do have some prospects now of uh, things as far as that goes okay um but i i think one of the transitioning points is actually moving on into doing my own work which is uh you know it's i i feel like i've spent all this time learning how to sing in a way and Mm -hmm. then but i've been singing someone else's song for for the whole time yeah You can imagine as a musician, you know, just doing cover tunes the whole time. Right. I don't know. I, well, I've actually rarely I, ever done cover tunes. I can't yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> Occasionally it's I will really, just because it's like, that would be fun. That's that's the only reason. I'd never do it for money. I, I do it because it's like, that would be a fun one to do. Yeah. yeah. But yes. do you get any... Um, 
residuals or or uh, profit sharing or anything like that from the from the uh, books that you've done, or is it just you're paid yeah. for the book? Okay, you do then. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, you know, some more than others. In some years, the uh, the uh, royalties are better than others. Um, so, and and it does it does depend on the project. Uh, you know, quite a few of them are just what they call for hire work. Yeah, which is just you know they they just pay for it and then you know you're done. Hey, high five, we're we're good. Okay, and then you know and then others are like, uh, you know, I'll, I I get paid every you know, a couple months or something like that. So that's, that's pretty neat. Okay. Um, so it still does exist. It's not that you, when these dried up, it was like, and then there was nothing. There's still something. It's just not new something or added something. <laughs> like, right. You know, yeah. Stuff well, that makes was, a difference. <laughs> yeah. It was almost just enough to, to slow me down, to keep me from asking questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. like, like, oh, I'm still getting a little money. It'll be all right. I can wait a little longer. And it's like, oh, after a while, I'm like, well, all right, I got to do something else. You know? Okay. Not not necessarily quit what I was doing, but, you know, I'd, you know, diversify. Let's get something else going. How can we, I'd, you know, do more self-promotion and mm-hmm. um, stuff like that. And uh, shoot, I even had the thought of doing something a lot like this podcast that you've got going on. I, you know, just asking artists who are actually making it work like okay what are you what are you doing how do you pull this off you know right. how does this how do you make this work for you yeah yeah and it, having conversations like that is i mean it's important uh, one of the first things i learned when i started it was everybody was talking about uh on top of it it's like networking and meeting people through people or discovering new avenues just because you had a conversation with someone and it, it it is a big part of it. I mean, you don't have to have a podcast to do it, but it does help. I can meet more people this way. Um, but right. even just going out to places and talking to people or uh, presenting your work, or I know people who have done that just through putting their stuff in galleries, which I know that's a difficult one, especially for like, you know, cartoonish artists like ourselves. It's like nobody, mm-hmm. it, unless you're like, you know, uh, Bill Watterson or something, nobody's going to want to see a full thing of your work hanging on their wall or anything like that. You know, like they, they'll read it in passing and then go, well, that was fun. And then move on with their lives, which is always why I question like, what's the deal with us wanting to draw cartoons? You know, <laughs> what's cause that's yeah. really the way it is. It's like, it's, it's to entertain for a few minutes and then move on with your life. It's not something that you're yeah. going to look at forever and go, this really brings the room together. This really makes a difference, you know? <laughs> and that's what every other form of art seems to be, except for this, even for music. It's like, oh, that was fun to listen to. Or I like to sing with that. Ah, now I'm sick of it and I'm never going to listen to it again. You know, that's, it's the same thing. And those are the mediums that I've chosen. That's the medium that you were saying you didn't want to do illustration and illustration is something that people always need. Somebody always needs, instead of paying a photographer, they'll go, hey, it's cheaper to pay a person that's going to take three hours to make this picture for us rather than just go snap a picture quick and send us the copy. Not to not to poo-poo how you, you know, photographers do their stuff. I know it's more difficult than that, but I'm just saying you sit down at Photoshop and learn how it works and do all this stuff out of your brain. And it's, you know, when you could just take a picture. But anyway... That's a little, that's a little weird rant to kind of go like, why do we do this? What's your, no, why I, do you think you do it? <laughs> I wanted to ask you why you do it. <laughs> I do I, it. Be, I do it because I'm going to anyway. That's the thing. Like I Whoa, do enjoy I doing like it personally, you know? On. And, and so why not try <laughs> to put it out there? Like, you know, why not see like if somebody does want to pay for it or if I do happen to just accidentally fall into a, you know, a hole full of money. Uh, that people want to give me for it, then it's like, great, I'll, I'll take it. Otherwise it's like, well, it's better than just drawing it. And then like going, I enjoyed it and it didn't show it to anybody else. So that's well, why I do it is because I'm already going to. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, I, that answer kind of stupefies me a little bit. I yeah. wasn't expecting that. I, <laughs> I just, uh, I'm going to, anyway. I'm not doing that's it to get rich. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, it's it's like, but okay. So then, my next question is like, okay, so why would you do it? And like, why are, what's the anyway? You know, what, why, why that? Why that particular form? Why that? Why that story? And I re- I read, oh, I think it was in your mailing list or something. Like th- this is where the strip came up with. Just mm-hmm. I, 
it wasn't a, I, I didn't know what to write so i just started just doing my own life you know something yeah. something that was interesting in the day and that's just what i what i illustrate mm -hmm. yeah and and that's really it is because writing a story sometimes for me it's I can't do it all the time, but I mean, I live my life every day, so I can do that. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. And that's, that does the writing for me. It's not that it's always going to be interesting, but it'll be like, I always have, if somebody goes, how was your day? I always have to go, well, I mean, I did this, even if it's something stupid, like I made dinner and went to bed, you know, which that's, I'd never just do that, but it's still telling somebody something. So how would I draw a comic about, I made dinner and went to bed. And oddly enough, in a four panel form, sometimes that can be really like indie filmish it's the weird perspective of like it doesn't have to be scooby-doo going roar you know uh it could just be like literally just someone frying in a pan and i didn't do much today tell me if you've ever heard of this there used to be a comic i want to say it was either in the onion like way back uh maybe in the late 80s early 90s and it was called jim it was a stick figure and it literally was the I, I want to say it was even before Seinfeld. It was literally a comic strip about nothing. The main character was named Jim. He was a stick figure. And it would just be each one of his days. And it would be something like, uh, I didn't do much today, but that was all right. And that was the comic strip. And it was just a stick figure standing there. And that's what it said over his head. And he would do stuff like that. Like, uh, I took a walk today. It was kind of fun. And that was a comic. And it, but it was oddly like, wow, this is brilliant. It, you know, it's just weird <laughs> formats. So anyway, now that's enough about my answer to the question. What's your answer to the question? Why? Did, so why did you start cartooning? Uh, okay. So I'm reading this right now because it's, you know, I'm doing market research. This one's pretty popular in his genre. Right? It's called Ducks? Yeah. It's by Kate Beaton. Okay. And uh, she did uh, this comic strip back, you know, it was a web comic called Hark of Vagrant. And uh, this is a uh, this tome. It's really long. It's it's about how she she grew uh, grew up in uh, Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, or something like that. And the only place to get a job was in this gnarly place where a whole bunch of dudes worked, like a whole you know way far away. And I mean, it's this personal memoir thing, but and not unlike what you're talking about. Yeah, you know. So you know, your comic is like a daily. Or, or not, you don't do it every day, right? But it's no, like, I you know, used to, just, but then I, it was just, sometimes I'm like, you know what? I'm really busy that day. You know, <laughs> so I don't get it yeah. done and I don't kill myself over it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's one of the keys though. When mm -hmm. you're doing any of this, it's just like, ah, I didn't make it happen today. All right. There's tomorrow. Let's go to bed. Right. But, uh, no, I, I'm just, I was, I was having, it's so big, but she does a really good job. And, uh, but it's, and but I'm asking the question of like, what makes a work like this uh, significant? Mm -hmm. um, you know what what is the power? I guess of that personal memoir, like you know, like you said, you know, it's something that I'm going to do anyway. Like, and I'm thinking, well, why are you going to do it in the first place? Um, not that you shouldn't, because you should, because that's what we do. Um, I think every artist in no matter what the discipline is, it could be painting. I mean, you could be like, what's that? Ellsworth Kelly that, that painted those bright panels that were just shaped weird. And, and that was the painting mm -hmm. and, or, you know, Mark Rothko, you know, I'm, I bring those guys up because, you know, people look at those sort of stupefied, like that's art. Like, well, yeah, I mean, you hang one of those up in the room and the room is no longer the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, so like you said, really brings the room together. And, yeah. and, uh, but, but even in doing that, I found like those guys are still telling a story. There's some sort of way that they are shaping a narrative. Even if that one is like an ongoing narrative that actually everybody who comes in the room gets to participate in, in some way. But, uh, you know, I think every artistic and creative discipline has that, but then the, Ah, there's something about the memoir, which I would say my work is is really a memoir too, but it's just really weird. Mm -hmm. It's it it it's it's moved into this odd subconscious spiritual symbolic level, but I'm still doing the same stuff. Okay, like this is my life. This is these are different facets of me re represented in, um, 
goofy ways, but and and the and the shocking thing for me is that a lot of the characters I'm just doing off the cuff. Wouldn't it be funny to make a guy like this? Yeah. And then 20 years later, I'm looking at it going, holy crap, this is me. Mm -hmm. Like, this is what I'm doing. This is what I did. And, uh, oh, my gosh, this is what this guy means and this guy means. And it's sort of blowing my mind a little bit. Yeah. But but it's that thing. It's like, that, but I have to do it. I, I've got to tell the story. Um, and I'm going to be doing it anyway. Mm -hmm. And I've because all my work is dried up, I've got lots of time while I'm waiting for the next thing. So yeah. I'm making this, I'm doing this, you know? So with the past work that you have had and the experience in the industry, that's actually very related to what you do. Uh, are there any things that you're bringing over like going, okay, here's kind of the plan that I have for doing my mm -hmm. own stuff. Like what, what are your, what are your goals or what have you at least set up to start out with creating your own stuff and like getting your own work out there on your own? Well, I mean, I'm I'm really just thumping around in the dark as far as the connection part. Nothing of wrong it. with that, you know. The, yeah, <laughs> you know the more, you know, I I I can make some stuff and and uh, I've I've got that down, and then ed, every other bit is just like, oh shoot, I gotta figure this out, and I you know I don't I don't know how to. It's so easy for me. I've I figured out that making art is kind of like a coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just I think it was Aldous Huxley said. We, uh, they intoxicate themselves with work so they don't see who they really are. Hmm. And I was, I read that and I was like, I got to write that down. And, and, uh, the, uh, the undertaker in my, my, uh, comic. Oh, I thought you were going to say like the wrestler, the undertaker, <laughs> like you were going to yeah. name a quote. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, maybe the, uh, that guy who's, who's on the front page and he's, he's the guy dressed in black and, uh, uh, he is, uh, when I uh, originally invented him, he was a, uh, a drinker. He was an alcoholic. Okay. And then as I was writing the story, um, that didn't come into play. Um, I, I, just as I was writing it, it, it just never came up. And I, um, I thought, well, that's kind of weird. I sort of wanted to put it into different places. And, uh, but then it occurred to me that, uh, there's this place where he interacts with, uh, this other character and whenever he touches this other character he has this vision of himself of like who he was made to be like he has this vision of himself with a wife and a child and and uh, a, a vision of himself as a as a parent mm -hmm. and uh and i and and when that it, it was really funny when i'm doing these stories because i'll sit down with just this vague idea of what i want to do um or, or maybe just a one facet of a scene and then I'll start writing that scene and then the rest of, you know, it just starts unfolding from there. You know, art, other artists and stuff, they'll, they'll call it the muse or whatever. And, and, you know, that's basically it. It's, it's, uh, it, it gets started at the point of access when you, when you really access that vision, mm -hmm. which is one of the cool things about being an artist. You know, we, we actually have, uh, you know, we're actively using, our imaginations to draw things yeah. uh, from a realm of invisibility, even though, you know, even, even though it may be a memoir or something, you're, you're just telling, telling a little facet of your life. You're, you're telling it in a, in a way that will have a particular impact um, based upon the, you know, the way that you're telling it and the medium you're telling it in. And, uh, but that was one of the things that's actually helped me a lot with uh you know, doing all of these different projects, it reminds me of you know, when we were mentioned cover tunes. Mm -hmm. It, uh, I've learned so much. Like if you look at my work back from when I first started as a, as an illustrator, it's like oh, it's hurt, it hurts, painful to look at. And but then over time, especially with the graphic novels, um, I've gotten so much better. I've improved technically so much from playing all these cover tunes basically. Yeah. And like now I've got not, not only the, the skill, but also the, the, uh, Oh, the workflow, you know, the, I, you know, the, you know, you may, you may have this, you got to be organized, you know, 
you yeah. gotta you gotta you gotta <laughs> organize your photoshop document so you can figure out what you did let's last say week. i'm repetitive yeah. I'm not necessarily <laughs> organized like i know i need to do this then you know that's about it i wouldn't I, and then i rush to do it it's, so that's a form of organization but i know right. like i have certain days where i do things uh certain times of days where i do things and that's just it now a lot of the time when I go to do those things, I'll be like, oh, now I don't have enough time to do the thing I really wanted to do. So I wouldn't say organized, but I would say consistent. No, <laughs> consistent. There we go. I'll say consistent. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm but but I mean, down. it's there. It's there. Uh, I know yeah. what you mean. Well, that's that's actually the form of organization that I'm finding I need right now. It's yeah. like I'd, it, I'd, I, was on, I was on a bike ride the other day and I was thinking, you know, since I really have the time and you know, whatever to uh, do anything. How do you figure out what to do? I yeah. Know. Yeah. You know, but if it, that's, that's the kind of thing that no. I need, like every, every day of the week, I got to have that one thing that I do on different mm -hmm. times a day and stuff like that. That's been the trick, I, you know, cause that's one of the things that uh, having, having a graphic novel project that I'm doing for a client, uh, it's really easy just to fall into that idea of like, okay, I'm working, my, my pen is moving, um, you know, I'm going through these pages and everything's working out good. And, uh, um, you know, I'm on, I'm on schedule or I'm a little bit behind or whatever. That's yeah. where the organization comes in. You really got to like make sure you're, you, you have a quota and stuff because there's no way you can cram 124 pages into a few weeks. To right. Kill you. And also, do so, you get paid by the hour for a job like that? Or would it be you get this much plus a percent? Like, how, how does that work? Because you're saying it, you're, you know, you're probably always trying to get done because there is a timeline. But in that timeline, yeah. are you counting the hours that you do? Or is it just like, no, have it done by this and we'll pay you this much? Yeah, I, uh, it, there's usually just a fee for the project. Okay. And, uh, so I, so I you can sometimes probably do more than you probably should be, right. you know, <laughs> like you're actually giving them free work. Uh, if you were to do it hourly, you know, uh, it, you're, you're probably but, doing way more. Yeah. Work. Well, yeah, that's true. And that's one of the things, like, I almost never work hourly, like almost never. Mm -hmm. Like I'm trying to think of when I did that last, it hasn't. It's, it very rarely happens, but I found out along the way that even though I've got a, a rep and stuff, I really like to try to give the client um, more than maybe they need or more than not, 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 you know, I don't want to just bombard them with a bunch of crap they're not going to use. Yeah. But um, there was one particular job that I did where, I was going to get paid uh, 500 bucks to do a sample illustration to, to basically compete for the job because they were interested in a number of illustrators for it. And uh, so they were going to pay each of us to do some samples and, uh, and we were going to get 500 bucks for it. So I thought, Hey, you know, this, is, this job is going to pay pretty good if I get it. So I'm going to do a thousand bucks with her work basically, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, not really, you know, saying that every figure is worth a hundred. No, but I get where you're coming from. Figure, you're like, you know? I'm still going to do better than what most people would probably do for this amount of money just to show that I'm worth it type of thing. And right, I get that. Right. That makes and sense. That, yeah. And that, that kind of attitude going into it, you know, I, I've got, I, I haven't figured out the marketing thing yet. I got to say, you know, doing it solo, but, uh, I, I have, you know, as far as working with clients and, uh, you know, doing, you know, fulfilling and trying to surpass client expectations, you know, doing the absolute best job I can, you know, really pays off for me in the end because I end up, you know, getting, I mean, having a good relationship with that client for one thing. And then, you know, if something else comes, you know, down the line, uh, you know, they, they, they won't hesitate to, to uh, think of working with me again, if, if my, type of type of stuff fits with what they're wanting to do yeah so that you know that was that's one of the big things is like i think it was neil neil gaiman said that uh you need to do three things to work as a freelancer you have to be really good you have to be really on time and then uh you have to be really good to work with the thing is is he said that if if you can do two of those you're going to be a, you're probably going to do all right you, know, mm -hmm. you can be a jerk but if you deliver on time 
and you do good work, no one cares, you know? Right. <laughs> and you can be sort of, sort of uh, crappy, but still, if you're on time and you're fun to work with, then hey, you know, they'll forget that. Those are kind <laughs> of like the major points of a lot of the stories he writes too. Like there's the person who's like, he's a total jerk, but he's the best at what he does. You know, like <laughs> those are kind of the stories he does or like, you know, they're not very good, but man, he has a heart of gold. Uh, you know, that's so he, he, his own ex- explanation of it was a short little poem of his stories. I like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that is if he, you said you think Neil Gaiman said it. So it, that's if I'm he was the sure. one that yeah, said I'm, I'm it. It sounds like something he would him. say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what are your plans for, uh, the, the car, uh, the comic that you're doing? I know that you've put it together as graphic novel right now, which are you self-publishing that? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's just available on Amazon. Well, it's available as a print on demand. So it's, you know, you can get it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or wherever else. Yeah. And, and uh, so, um, and, and I've, I've been, I was just, I have it all written out for, oh, everything but the tail end is, is totally uh, written. And uh, so it's probably going to be 250 pages or so, you know, wow. pretty, pretty thick, yeah. pretty thick story. And, uh, it'll eventually make sense and stuff. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but I, 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 I came to a place this fall where it occurred to me that, wow, I, I really should just tie it off right here and publish what I've got so far because man, I'm not even a third of the way through the story yet. And, uh, there's so much to do and I need to have, have something that I can, uh, give to people so something you know something to sell it's something to say hey i am doing stuff you know not, yeah you know otherwise this thing would just sit on the shelf forever and i'm not you know just having that big massive project that uh you know isn't paying anything until you can get it out there so i i thought about uh doing that and uh and went ahead and published it oh around the new year and then i think what i'm going to do now though is uh do about 20 25 pages at a time 24 25 pages just do it like a traditional you know the mm-hmm. you know the old school sort of floppy comic kind of thing yeah that way i i think i need that little payoff <laughs> every uh every little bit so i can keep going on it and get it get it finished and you're saying um, like the existing pages you'll start putting out as issues yeah, well, I was thinking of doing it with the existing pages, but I've already got, for instance, it would be number four. Uh-huh. Um, the book that I did, the book that I did put out would essentially be one through three. So it's because it's about 80 pages long. Well, so I'm thinking just doing it that way. But let's think of it this way. Let's let's brainstorm here. And this is just because I'm kind of struggling, not struggling. I'm kind of entertaining the exact same type of idea because I've been putting out stuff and uh, every year the stuff that I started with gets further away from what I'm working on. But the thing is, is you can't introduce people from the stuff you're working on today. Now, one of the things I learned from, I took this free little course about uh, promoting your books on Amazon. And one of the things Mm -hmm. they say, or the person said was, and it's, it's strictly for like, let me be clear. It's for advertising your book on Amazon to get people to read it, buy it, sell it or not sell it, uh, read it, buy it and, you know, go through it. And my focus because it's comics has mainly been eBooks because it's a far easier get. And especially since even though everybody hates it, even, but Amazon owns comiXology and people have a subscription to comiXology. So they can just read books without necessarily having to buy. It's like Netflix. They pay a fee every month to read whatever the heck they want anyway. So I focus on those people for Mm -hmm. eBooks. And the thing that they say is, is if you have a series, start with the first one. Don't advertise your latest book because they'll start from that. And then when they're done, they'll move to the next one and go to the next one. So I'm doing that novel wise, but I've been entertaining the idea of like, what if I just started publishing each month and advertised each month because I get paid for each of the reads that I get from subscribers to those eBooks. So when they read through and go to the next one, I get, it's like, it's like listening to a song on Spotify. I get like one cent a page roughly and they go through and they continue to read. So, and it's a series, it's already there. There's no reason not to go like, okay, here's a comic issue. It's 24 pages. And they'll go through and read that. And if they choose to read another one, great. And if not, then, you know, by my first collection, my first 24 or 25 pages uh, of the book I put out, 
gets read, gets more popular, gets then promoted naturally to people because it's being read and reviewed. And that's why I'm so that's why I'm saying like, don't I get the instinct because I did it for years and now I'm like going, God, I wasted a lot of time because I could have just been putting out those single issues of the earlier stuff and just promoting that to people where like, then when you put out a new issue of the 24 pages, they get alerted. Hey, they just released a new issue. They just released a new mm-hmm. issue of that book that you've been reading and they continue to keep reading it. And now you're no longer paying for the advertising. You have readers. And I'm not saying that right. it's guaranteed, but in theory, when you think about it, it's like, God, that makes so much sense. Now, the drawback is, is you have to put together a comic every tw- <laughs> every month. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's the only drawback, but I am entertaining it. And it's like, well, if I get ahead of, it by like three issues and I stay ahead of it three issues that way I can at least schedule them to go out each month and then go oh that reminds me this again being the I have to find time to do it thing that reminds me like if I publish one that means I have to make another one so I got to do that before I publish it sort of thing so I'm always three ahead but that's so I've been going through the same thing so when I heard you say like you know I don't want to start with the first ones it's like yeah but that's how you introduce people and get them uh-huh. to read the series. And then when they go through, they understand the characters that you have instead of trying to get them to understand on issue four. You know, right? people always want to go back and get issue one, like at a comic book store. So it's, yeah, it's different for us as comics, uh, comics creators because it's harder to introduce in the middle. It's like... Uh, like with mine, like why, why is he writing about his parking garage? You know, it's it's, it's because that's what I do. (laughs) Don't you get it? (laughs) But anyway, so, uh, and just because you do have so much knowledge and so much, um, a probably better ability than me to put together a book because you always have to prepare stuff for clients and stuff for you. It's probably like, it'll take you no time. So I, I work with a template, you know, so, yeah, lots of templates, you know, keep put those templates together mm-hmm. and then you can just duplicate all of that junk that's got, you know, because basically when you're doing an issue, you know, you need the you'll need the cover, uh, copyright and maybe maybe or maybe not the title page and you should be good. That's the only thing that would be repeated. And I've been trying to put some kind of a call to action on the back, you know, yep. some kind of absolutely like, like the Lester Gonians, the, the actual book has a. A QR code that you can scan and subscribe to my uh, newsletter and stuff, which I I haven't started doing yet. That's on the list of stuff to actually get going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was going to ask you what. Uh, so do you, do you just do uh, Comicsology and or do you have the ebook available through any other platform other than Amazon? Um, right now, I only have it on Amazon because I am doing the uh, the. Kindle Unlimited read, uh, subscri- I don't know the better way to say it. It's it's called key, uh, KENP, which means that you get paid for each page read. Now, the only way that you can get that for Kindle Unlimited subscribers is that it's only available in the Kindle Unlimited store. So currently I am okay. only doing Amazon just because... Well, one, because there's nothing for me to lose. I wasn't selling it. I had it on other platforms and I wasn't selling it on other platforms. Nobody was buying it. Amazon was the only one where I would get actual advertising that worked. And so I was like, heck with it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put it available for there. Other readers that are other authors or writers or uh, people like that, that have more of an audience for what they do. They may not like that. And a lot of them don't. They don't like being restricted to one area. Me, I'm like, I wasn't doing that well anyway. So I'm cool with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, if yeah. you're going to do the uh, Kindle Unlimited Readers or Comixology Unlimited Readers, it can only be available in their, on their platform. Uh, just right. to give okay. you a heads up on that. But if you're just selling the ebook, uh, you know, for like what, two ninety nine or three ninety nine every issue. Yeah, you can do that too and sell it on all the other platforms and even have it available on your own website. So, you mm-hmm. know, th- there there are options. Um, yeah. And then, um, so let me ask you one more thing, uh, you know, just uh, before we go here today, uh, what are some of the, so what are some of the plans that you have or projects in the future or things going on that you want people to know about that you have coming up or things that people could expect in the near future from you? Okay, well, it'd be more of uh, more of that Lestragonian story as I continue okay. to develop how to get it um, out. 
But even beyond that, I've I've got some much more marketable ideas that I'm I'm wanting to get pitched here. Uh, more, uh, oh, you know, kind of sci-fi fantasy sorts of goofy cartoony kinds oh, of uh, comics and stuff like that. Uh, all in the you know, long form graphic novel kind of thing is uh, what I hope to be. Uh, getting going here in the in the near future and stuff so i'd I'd, of course i'm going to try to do the easy easier for me thing and and put put some pitches together and see if i can't find a publisher for it but um whether that flies or not i'm definitely going to keep doing uh the less dragonians at least until i can get through the end of that story and that's one of the major transitions i've been making too is actually pivoting towards investing uh you know personal time and energy into those, into those personal stories and stuff. So I'm not playing yeah. covers all the time anymore. Right. You know? I gotta, I, I gotta play that song. I was made to sing. You know? Yeah. No. And your artwork for it is amazing. So I think that will give it a leg up. And, uh, from what I've seen so far of it, it's the story's really cool. So Thanks. I, I, I think, I think you could very possibly do pretty well at this. And I really do hope that it does work, you know? And I, yeah. I say that, I say that like when a lawyer goes, I'm not going to say that we can get you off, but <laughs> I will do my best. <laughs> right. yeah. And if people wanted to check out more of your stuff or see your artwork and what you do, uh, where would you suggest that they go do that? Um, um, I'm on Instagram at spark Gilpin. And, uh, my website is, uh, S Gilpin.com. That's S G I L P I N.com. Um, and I try to keep that portfolio updated and, yeah. and there, there's a whole, a whole, uh, show of a whole bunch of the books that I've done and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's and, an impressive uh, collection. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I, I need to, uh, I am going to get a newsletter out so that I can, I can keep people, um appraised as as to what i'm going to be uh you know new releases and things like that 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 uh, i'm going to be doing in the near future and different things that i'm going to be up to so that that would be the place the website so. great all right well i want to thank you so much for talking with me today hey i appreciate it <laughs>